Buried beneath Cappadocia lies Derinkuyu, a city carved 85 meters deep, engineered to hide and sustain 20,000 people without the outside world ever noticing. New 3D scans are exposing not just tunnels, but a hidden survival machine – air, water, food, and defense, all underground. How did ancient engineers solve the impossible? And what secrets do these unseen layers still hold? Derin Kuyu's survival machine starts with the rock itself. Cappadocia's volcanic tuff is soft enough to carve with simple hand tools, yet holds its shape under pressure. This unique geology let ancient builders dig not just sideways, but straight down, stacking chambers and corridors into a vertical city. Each level serves a purpose. The uppermost floors host livestock pens and kitchens, where waste and heat can be managed close to the surface. Just below, communal halls and chapels form the heart of daily life, buffered from the outside world yet accessible for gatherings. Carved stair cores, tight, twisting spines, connect these layers acting as both passageways and barriers. These vertical shafts concentrate movement, making it easy to control who goes where and to funnel air, people, and supplies through narrow choke points. Deeper still, storage rooms and cellars are tucked away, insulated from temperature swings and shielded from any threat above. The cold, steady climate underground, around 13 degrees Celsius year-round, keeps grain, oil, and wine fresh for months. Even the schoolrooms and study cells are placed with intent, set apart from the noise and activity of the upper levels. Every space is scalloped, arched or ribbed so the weight of the earth flows around it, not down onto weak spots. This is not a random warren of tunnels. It's a tiered, organized neighborhood, engineered from the inside out to support thousands, all hidden beneath the ground. The layout itself is the first line of defense and the backbone of daily survival. Tunneling at Derinkuyu began over two and a half millennia ago. The first known excavations date to the Iron Age, when Phrygian builders in the 8th or 7th century BCE started carving into the volcanic tuff beneath Cappadocia. Their early work laid the foundation for a network that would be expanded and adapted by generations to come. Centuries later, as the Byzantine Empire faced waves of Arab raids from the 8th to the 12th centuries. AD, Christian communities in the region turned Derinkuyu into a lifeline. They hollowed out new corridors, enlarged storage rooms, and built chapels and schools deep below ground, transforming the city into a true refuge for thousands. The city's design grew more sophisticated with each threat, as new defensive features and life support systems were added to meet the needs of a growing underground population. Even after the medieval era, Derinkuyu never faded into myth. During the 14th century, Mongol incursions sent villagers underground once again. In the early 1900s, as violence swept through Anatolia during the Adana massacres, records and oral histories show that local Greek families sheltered in these same tunnels. The city remained a fallback through crisis after crisis, its passages maintained and remembered. Derinkuyu's story took an unexpected turn in 1963. A local resident, breaking through a basement wall, stumbled into a hidden corridor. Archaeologists soon mapped a sprawling underground world, and by 1969, the city opened to visitors. What began as a survival project in the Iron Age had become a living archive of adaptation, used and upgraded for over 2,000 years. Fresh air is the first non-negotiable for life underground, and Derinkuyu's builders approached the problem with a scale and precision that rivals modern engineering. The city's ventilation network centers on four main shafts, each plunging over 50 meters through the volcanic tuff, flanked by more than 50,000 microvents scattered across every level. These shafts act like the lungs of the city, using the stack effect to pull cooler air from below and push stale air out above, even when every stone door is sealed tight. Computational fluid dynamics, models built from recent 3D scans, confirm that airflow reaches even the lowest chambers, circulating enough oxygen to support thousands for extended periods. But air wasn't the only thing moving through these shafts. 
In 2025, Sezen Naz and her team at Istanbul Galata University used high-resolution acoustic models to reconstruct how sound traveled through Derinkuyu. Their simulations show that a shout or warning call in a kitchen or chapel could carry upward through the vent shafts, remaining intelligible across three or more levels. This built-in communication system meant that alarms, orders, or even daily routines could be coordinated across a city-sized labyrinth, all without open windows or risky surface signals. In Nas's words, the integration of ventilation and communication functions within the same architectural elements is considered one of Derinkuyu's most unique features. The city's air shafts weren't just about survival, they were the backbone of a silent, invisible network, keeping breath and voice moving through stone when it mattered most. Water security was non-negotiable in Derinkuyu. Wells were cut deep inside the city, reaching down to protected aquifers that lay far below the surface. These shafts weren't just backups, they were the only safe way to draw water during a siege when venturing outside could mean disaster. Some wells dropped more than 50 meters, sealed off from any contamination or sabotage from above. This isolation kept the lifeline clean, even as thousands lived and worked underground. The climate in these tunnels is remarkably stable. At 13 degrees Celsius year-round, the air keeps grain, wine, and oil fresh for months. Local farmers still use tough caves like these to store potatoes and apples today, relying on that same cool, damp air to slow spoilage. One farmer from the nearby village of Kaimakli, Kaimakli, describes how, even in the hottest summers, his apples stay crisp in a cave just a few meters below ground, proof that the ancient builders understood their environment as well as any modern engineer. Defending the city meant more than hiding. Corridors narrow to single file at key points, forcing intruders to slow down. Massive circular stone doors, some weighing up to 500 kilograms, could be rolled into place from inside, locking off entire levels in seconds. These doors are carved so precisely that a single defender could block an army, while families and supplies remained safe deeper in. The architecture itself absorbs stress. Barrel vaults and ribbed ceilings distribute the weight of the earth above, resisting collapse even during earthquakes. Every arch and pillar was shaped with purpose, turning soft volcanic tuff into a fortress that could outlast both time and attack. Digital scans are transforming. How researchers understand Derinkuyu. Using dense point cloud mapping, engineers have charted thousands of chambers and corridors in high resolution, sometimes capturing details down to a few millimeters. These models reveal entire sections that had been blocked for decades, including hidden rooms and bypass tunnels far beyond the tourist route. With this data, teams can run airflow simulations, watching how fresh air circulates from the deepest wells to the uppermost vents. Crowd movement modules let them test evacuation routes and calculate how long it would take to clear every level in an emergency. One recent simulation tracked the movement of 5,000 people from the lowest chambers to the surface, factoring in choke points and stone doors. As one scanning engineer put it, the city becomes a living data set. We can see not just where people lived, but how they survived under pressure. Archaeologists and engineers are still divided over what Derinkuyu truly represents. Some argue it was built as a vast emergency bunker, a place for entire towns to vanish underground during raids, then return to the surface when danger passed. They point to Byzantine chronicles, describing sudden disappearances and the city's defensive bottlenecks. Others see evidence of a permanent urban layer, schools, chapels, wineries, and storage chambers that suggest continuous life and routine maintenance over generations. The debate has only sharpened as new 3D scans reveal tunnels linking Derinkuyu to neighboring sites like Kaimakla, hinting at a regional network rather than isolated hideouts. Disagreements go beyond interpretation. Ownership of the digital scan data itself is contested, with government agencies, private firms, and academic teams each controlling different pieces of the puzzle. The result is a live controversy, with both the city's purpose and its true extent still under negotiation. Derinkuyu stretches over 85 meters underground 
and once sheltered up to 20,000 people. With a system of stables, chapels, wells, and rolling stone gates carved from volcanic tuff, the latest 3D scans and airflow models confirm that ancient builders engineered not just survival, but a functioning city. Multi-level ventilation shafts, siege-proof water wells, and corridors designed for both defense and daily life. Yet, key questions remain. Experts still debate whether Derinkuyu was mainly an emergency refuge or a permanent underground community, and new scans hint at even wider networks beneath Cappadocia. The full scope of its tunnels and how many people could truly live here for months is still unproven. What is clear, Derinkuyu is not lost myth or speculation. Its architecture and engineering are documented, and its story reaches into the 20th century. As new digital models unlock hidden chambers, Derinkuyu stands as evidence of how complex problem-solving shaped real lives underground.